So I have like the worst memory and um, tend to like figure out little tricks to like uh, put these things back together. Whenever you, so like, so we have four screws, right, that have to go into there. Two, three, four, right? And because I know that, and I'm going into metal, that means the thread's going to be a little bit on the, on the thinner side. So whenever you have, you're going into metal, just always remember that, you know? That's how I, just so you can kind of differentiate, it helps you narrow down what screw you're going to use. So these look like, see they're much thinner in thread than the other ones. So take a look at the, let's consider the difference. So the thinner one's going to go into metal. The wider threaded pitch on that one, closest to you, is going to go into threat into plastic so let's see that that looks like yeah that's t t15 is it t15 t20 no t20 and it couldn't be the other one yeah all right so this is a t20 here so I just want to line that up with the back here That's good. Hmm. So some some people I know are very much not into this world going back. Well, not the world, America. <laughs> um, but the way that they're um, reintroducing the uh, normalcy for the economy and the world, uh, the American experience, that is, since this COVID thing has happened, it's caused a lot of conflict. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can tell. Some people want to go back to work and because they don't really have much of a choice, and others, well, they, they're like, well, so let's get rid of this virus all the way, you know? People are all over the place the way they want to deal with this, but then what's happening is uh, you've got massive amounts of like strange negative um, kind of responses to things, such as like the condemnation of another person to a point where you, you know they wish them death. I don't know, man. The conversation is just decayed when you are now beginning to wish death upon someone that has a different opinion upon you, that, that differs in opinion from you, you know, that's never, it doesn't facilitate good conversation if you get my drift. Well, either way, right? So that's what I'm noticing that's happening. And, um, you know, if you're able to, like, sustain being at home as in like you got enough money you know you have enough space your kids are well behaved enough or you don't have kids you know and you're not stressed about paying your mortgage or your rent you know because there is no like hey listen you don't have to pay your mortgage this month for some people you know it's just not the reality that they have because well it's just not the reality so how can we condemn them and think that it's okay for them to uh you know, just be all right with like being out of work. That just sounds silly, right? So the problem with the conversation is that there's multiple experiences to this. As I was saying, you know, there are a lot of people in difficult situations, like uh, if you're in an abusive husband, abusive wife situation. I should have just said abusive situation. I don't know why I had to do that gender crap. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the uh, gendered arguments. They tend to be very uh, inaccurate with what's really happening. People abuse each other, period. Male, female. Men fight differently, women fight differently, too. Well, either way. Fighting just sucks if you're on the receiving end of it. So let's lubricate this a little bit. We're going to lubricate the bottom end. I just want to do that before we kind of close it up. i use a little Marvel Mystery Oil here. And uh, I just want to pour a little bit. Alright, right, then we'll uh, 
lube the top a little. We could do that even closer to the end, but I'll do it right now. Got a couple pulls, stay out of the way. So this kind of just lubricates the cylinder. I'm going to turn it back on. It's not stirring up all dry. Okay. I know that set. Uh, let us. Um, so we have to attach this front here. Right, so if you look here, there's three. One, two, three. We're going into plastic. So those are going to be these little friend of ours here. So this is a much see the thread pitch on that. Okay, so we have a little thicker thread pitch and we need to get this. So let's see we this also has you can see that one, two, three, right? So That's how that goes. Okay. So you just kind of like have to line it up. You might get out of shot. We're going to reposition you. Oh, yeah, that's working well. Jeez. Okay, remember, clamp it into plastic here so don't do anything too crazy. Losing you. Can see it. That'll be a little better. So two at the bottom, two at the bottom. Okay, so that goes in like that. Right. And why did I do that up like that? I don't know. Yeah, that's good. This is a, these are also T20s, so. Ugh. What are we looking at? Let's get one started, flip it over. Okay, cool. You know what, I had a really interesting, like, uh, real world uh, kind of transformation that happened to me the other day when it comes to like being a good employee. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, you know, th there are certain people that kind of like jump ship, you know, they're like, ah, uh, it seems like the place is horrible to work out. They'll get out of there, you know. I've never been that kind of person. I just, just kind of like stuck around, try to like work within the system, fix it a little bit, because as far as I'm concerned, everybody's, most people are out of their friggin' minds, you know what I mean? And they don't even have the faculties to actually resolve it. So because of that, I've just kind of just accepted people for who they are, right? I have a fairly large window of acceptance for the batshit crazy. I don't recommend you do it in your personal life, though, as in your, your dating life. Definitely a bad idea, All right? So... What occurred, right, was that I began to accept the fact that um, for some situations, right, you are doomed. And you're doomed because if you, it's a power thing, right? You just don't have power over the person that owns the place. So, if that is your situation, right, then what occurs is that you have a limited amount of influence to change things if you're not supported by the top. 
right? Now, here's the thing. People have often talked about like, oh, you should just like, you know, stay, make a change, make a difference where you're at, right? I've done this, I've tried this, you know? And it's not the same for all, for all industries, so. I'm not really too interested in sharing what I do for a living because people are stalkers and I've had some negative things happen over the years. So I'll leave it a vague, vague like that, right? But what I can tell you, right, and it might be applicable to your situation, it goes like this, right? Um, if you don't have the support of the owner or owners at an organization or institution, and you're trying to change them, change the organization or institution, forget it. Just get out of that situation. Go to someplace else. Go to someplace else where you can deal with their crazy and they can deal with your crazy because you're not going to win. You know, I've tried so many times in my life to fix, to change, to influence things. And I've failed multiple times over and over. I mean, wasted well over two decades of my life. You can't get that back. That time is gone. You know? So this is what I tell you, if you're young, don't waste your time. You're in your 20s, you know, you, you, got, you got a new job, you started, even as a teenager. So your boss is treating you like shit. Or you work in a pretty, like, cantankerous environment where everyone's, like, out of their friggin' minds. And it's probably not because of them only, it's because it's probably a lot to do with, like, the way the leadership functions. Right? Get the hell out of there. Don't stick around. Go, go make your peace with someplace else. Put, lie on your resume that you were there for a long time. Do whatever you gotta do, but don't stick around. I'm telling you now, don't waste your time. Do what else, do what, do what everybody else is doing. Get the heck out of there. Change your life, change your situation, because it's not worth it. People are nuts. Oh, that works. I pull that, that spins. You know what I'm saying? Look, uh, uh, okay, good, there you go. So, like I said, get out of that situation, do the best you can and uh, for yourself and don't think that you're being selfish. It's just people are crazy and then don't deserve your time. And you only get one chance, if you're an atheist, to live on this planet. So do your best with the time you have. All right, so I kind of knew this before we started that there was something funky about, as I remember something crazy you had to do what was this thing here? So this gets threaded through here, these three wires. And uh, lucky for us, we got a red and a black for ground. Ground is obviously gonna go to the body or the chassis of the, uh, this, that's how you would know. It has to go there. This has to be connected to the magneto because that's red, you know? So if you didn't know, you know, that's one way to, you can kind of like narrow it down. So we'll try to push it through one at a time. And I remember uh, this required some some sort of like fandangling to get it right by not... It has some routing path that it, that it took. Let's see, I know that I, I should have not tightened things down before I figured out that routing path because that was a bit difficult to do. Anyway. Um, that doesn't make sense. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go upwards. Like this. Yeah, it's better. That comes around. I'll bring it around so you can see better. See if we can get away with doing it this way. So this it was like she routed behind. No, actually this should work. All right, so here we go. So we have uh, ground will be to the body right here, right, and then further back here it's gonna be uh, Oh boy, it's going to be a little hard with you there. So 
see what I'm trying to do. Okay. Let's try it this way. Can I get it on? No, I can probably. Maybe. Gonna do this without having to pull this back off uh, this top part here. Uh, ah, I think I might have to do that. Yeah, we're gonna have to loosen this up again. So we have those four. One, two. Four of those that kind of held this plastic shroud. And to say, if I can get it right, do it three more times. Alright, so that's a whole lot looser. Um, a little more play there. So we're going to try to get that positive connected. So a lot more room. I could just bend it, you know, but why bar be a bar why be barbaric? Ah, there you go. Positive's on. Negative goes right there. Okay. I think that should just be tucked in like that. Okay, so good. So I'll bring it back. I'll button this back up. Actually, I'll probably do it right now. Let's see if we can do it. In a reasonable amount of time. Let's... Or not. I'm not going to bore you to death. You've seen this already. I'll bring it. So this is a, one of those like coarser thread, bigger pitch, whatever, wider pitched ones because we're going to go into some plastic. And um, this top piece here, uh, there's a little gap right here. I'll make sure the wire wires are underneath that so you don't cut into them. This one was a pretty odd one for me um, to find. This is a T20. Yeah. Yep, T20. It just goes into here. It screws right into that. Okay, um, I guess we could check for a sparkle or while we're here before we go any further. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should. I think, we, I think so too. Yeah, let's just let's see if we get a couple holes in that. And I doubt you'll be able to see it, but. Yep, we got lots of sparkle. Good. All right, so yeah, that's fine. And I don't know what it goes here next. I'm officially kind of lost. Let me put this the rest of this together. Okay. That has to go on something like that, right? <sighs> Senior moment. So I've learned over the years now that I should probably check this. 
pressure, see if it holds pressure before I buy carb kit because the carburetor might just be screwed, you know. So I got this all connected. It's in the pressure mode. And uh, I've narrowed it down because there's only two choices. It's on that side, on that side. This would be the fuel at intake in. That would be the return. Because when I go like that, right? So watch the dial. Let's see if it can hold. So we get to 10 psi. Oops, sorry. Oops, I just pushed it again, didn't I? Okay, so you see it's it's creeping down slowly, so we're not getting a good seal. It kind of drops and holds it. Let's see. The orientation does matter. Let's try this again. So it's creeping down slowly. So if everything goes well, right, we'll rebuild this. This should hold at 10 PSI without creeping down. All right. So I did get a carp kit for this before I checked it. Hopefully everything works out well. Um, hmm. So I'm gonna pull this apart. Get as much plastic off of it as possible. That's about as plastic as it gets. See what we get. Yeah. Oh. That's better. This is a P uh, P two Phillips size P two. Okay, there we go. So the uh, diaphragm is on top here, and then the uh, so we have this on top, this plasticky one, and then below it is the uh, don't know what you call that. So we have that. This side over here. This carburetor is a little tricky to find the um sorry. To find the uh gasket kit for so I, I might have gotten the wrong kit you know we're gonna we're gonna see because this is a class of a carburetor I didn't find the exact number so I'm, I'm hoping that this works okay that's that Fairly rigid diaphragm mag. The that metal part there goes down inside of the cavity. That's something to remember. And this should be pretty flexible, you know. So that was on top of that. And then we have the gasket here. Okay. 
You don't want to really scratch the uh, aluminum, so be careful. Use something plastic. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, there you go. So that goes on first. Now this here, right? When this seats, it holds the pressure. That screw does not look too factory to me. Whatever. This is hands down the worst fee you can have me doing this. Put that in there. Needle. We have the seat. And then we have the spring. Don't lose it. Six dollars or five dollars if you lose it. Don't ask me how I know. Alright. So this is the only plasticky thing left. Actually there's that's also plasticky. Are we gonna take that off? Give it a try. Very small screw. It's got the uh, rounded head over screw. Lift right off. Hmm. I have a feeling like cut oh, there it is. What does that connect to though? Doesn't just want to come right out. Definitely doesn't. Huh. All right, you know what? I think I'm just going to probably suspend it like this. Leave it alone, yeah, before I break it. Not in a mood to break it. Let's just put this back. Uh, we'll suspend it like that and the ultrasonic cleaner just to keep the plastic out. Okay.
is a five sixteenths and three eighths at the bottom. To get this off, but I don't know what holds it on. Alright, I think I got it. I think I figured out how to get this thing off. So, this here, from here to here, unscrews. I can tell because there's some threads there. And then, see that spins together? But if you hold this right here, that one still moves by itself. So, um, let's see what I got. Let's see, lefty loosey, so we're going to come this way. Maybe that'll work. Yeah. That's not gonna work. Yeah, try that. Aha! Uh -huh. We did it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Ooh, that was a little gassy there. Some of you might have heard that. to try to grease this head. These things can come in like a thousand formats. That's probably the hardest part of this trimmer work is this trimmer. Okay, cool. So that goes on like that. Okay, we have a, a nut here that's holding this on. Does this should have gears in there, I don't know. What do you think? Something we can grease? 
So this is one of those like uh, detachable twist and edge it's called pieces. So you can put an edger on here. I loosened this up, couldn't pull it off because I think this is still too tight. So uh, let's, uh, let's just loosen these up and see what's going on down here. So they are also torques. So. Yeah, it looks like a, that's a T27. Yeah. Let's tighten that back up. It's a lot of work to try to do, do something right, you know. Trying to grease the damn head. Can this come out? Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. This is attached to the actual um, motor itself, and um, so I'll show you what I mean. So when you pull on the, um, we can't, I can't do it really easily, but when you pull on the, um, this is what transfers the power from the motor. So I'm hoping that, I mean, this is like free now. We can kind of work with this a little easier. Uh, we'll see. So I think right here is, uh, look, see that moves? I think we unscrew that. You know, at this point it's just like, I, I have to win, you know? So, <laughs> if you're tuning in, that's what's happening right now. I need to see what's going on with this thing here. How it's constructed and why it's so difficult to pull apart. And you know, ultimately you could break things while you do this, but whatever. Fix it till you break it, as they say. Okay. That's that. There you go. Okay, cool. So there's no there's not gear I don't know, there's not much in here. Oops, sorry, you can't see anything. So, and yeah, that's all that is. Okay, so there's no gears, it's just a Baron. And, um, all right, well, the fight was worth it. I mean, now I know how it works. I'm gonna put it back together. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I, I really just want to not went lose, so. Okay, let me tell you what we have. We have a 5 8 here. Let me give this a try. And then this here, this is a metric um, Allen key. It's a number 5. And um, it doesn't make sense, but anyway, because this is a square. I don't know what that's called, those square, those square um, pieces, you know? And uh, square, it's a square hole. I thought a quarter inch would work in there. doesn't work. Um, so I'm thinking that I can probably turn it like that, you know? So. Something like this. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Right. I mean, it's just spinning now, so I don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I can't even grab it. <sighs> Rats, I like to win. <laughs> Alright, well, if anybody knows what those things are called, those square-headed square-shaped holes 
side. I don't know what they are, but I've ran into them enough that I can tell you that I uh, I need to try to find a set. Okay, so we're gonna put this back together, and uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta call it a quits, you know. I'm just going to grease this a little bit. This is a corn head grease. And I'm going to need a grease gun for that, which I do have. Okay, so here we go. Let's put this back on. This has a hole. I gotta get that hole lined up with that one screw. So this collar here has. Let's get that hole lined up because there's a screw that kind of. Oops, gone too far. Fix it till you break it. Alright, here we go. Okay, so that hole is lined up over here. Yeah, because there's a hole on that side. You can't see it, but. I need to find this hole here. Get it lined up. It's the collar. Um, it's gonna, gonna trace this hole here. In other words, it's hard to see, so I had to poke something in it. Okay, and the tolerance on this thing is really high. It's not exactly high quality here, are we? Why'd you be like the wrong screw? Ah, what the hell? Right, I'll bring you back. I gotta figure this out. Maybe playing with the wrong toys here. I don't mean I don't think so. This feels like what I pull it in and out of. All it does is kind of stop it. There's not too many other screws I can choose from, so... Oh, there's a bit of carburetor. Hmm. Hate to be a floundering mess. It's not bad. 
going. Ugh, lower. Okay, that is correct. So. Just gonna get this started and then we're gonna get it. Hopefully a little easier this time around. All right. So I'm gonna use this as like a guide pin. <laughs> no, I'm not. This is, I can't. That was an awkward little haha. Uh -huh. All right, let's see. All right, let's try this again. Bring it down, line it up the best we can. Yeah, that's about right. I have a feeling we'll be adjusting this. So we have a collar that goes around that, that squeezes that down, right? And then we have this hole here that lines up nicely with that to keep that from spinning off, right? But it gives you this weird little angle here like this that doesn't really match that curve. So I'm gonna put it on like that. If anything feels too odd about it, we'll just pull it off and switch it around, you know? Okay, so anyway, put the collar on. Right, it's this collar. Put that there. Alright, we'll uh, just kind of like try to key, find that hole. Okay, that's that right there. Alright, and we'll take this here, screw that into that. Good enough for what it is. And uh, let's see, uh, this collar here can be a little tighter. So we're gonna tighten that up. Uh, we'll just, can I do this all right now? Let me see, is that possible? Oops. There we go. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, you can. I need to tighten that up. That was a uh, um, five eighths on this side. Yeah, five eighths on that side, and uh, three eighths on that side. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So three eighths socket here. Five eighths on this side. So we got this cap here, right? That goes on top of that bolt. I have a weird feeling that bolt was never gonna ever come off, to be honest with you. Well, actually, yeah, I think it does. Don't listen to me. But that goes on, it slips on top of the bolt to turn the head. The head looks like this. I'm just kind of see like at that. That goes down inside and screws in on. seen this type of head before you don't have a much of a choice as to like what you get to at least a gauge I wonder if it gets tightened over time just by using it you know? That's not going anywhere. 
Uh, let's see what we can do over here. I'm putting this stuff back on. So I'm just kind of sliding that on, pushing that into the chamber. See, there's a hole right there. See that hole? There's a bigger one over there. So to me, keep this from sliding in. It's probably going to go like this. Hmm. I think we might be fishing again. Yeah, we're going to do a little, have to do a little fishing. Let's see what's going on with Because I think that's where that, that locks into. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Does that make sense? I'll poke myself. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, I just gotta probably take that all the way out. It's like a T20. Did I just break off? No, it didn't. Okay. So it's my lucky day. Yeah, it's a, it's a T20. It felt like it just broke right off. Did that? I think it did. How did they make stuff so cheap? No, it didn't. Uh, that's the hole right there. Right here. Okay, perfect. So how about that worst world ending, huh? Wasn't that show great? Uh, so many people hate it now. They're like complaining. It doesn't feel like the Western. Yeah, I know it doesn't. It's a totally different show. You know, I have a little bit more sympathy for the uh, staff make these shows. You know, when you have like a bigger company uh, just hounding your back to finish off your work or you're, you know, you're, you're dealing with something like a, a pandemic. I don't know how that affected the release. Yeah, but I'm sure uh, some executives are like freaking out. Either way, I thought they did a good job with, with the show. It stepped away from what being a Western, you know, big time. But, uh, I'm fine with that. It was like, it was super entertaining. T20, T25? Yeah, it's a T25. Yeah, I thought it delivered. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, the next season. And uh, I hope that uh, it turns out whatever. It's just a show. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna debate about the merits of it. It's like it's like debating whether or not Gotham City existed or not. You know, it's kind of stupid to me. It's, it's fiction. People are so bent out of shape about it. Go write your own book. That's what I say. Cast your own movie and film it yourselves. You know what I mean? Stop, stop complaining. It's bigger things to worry about. Does anybody remember uh, movies like Art House Films? Anybody Art House Film fan? I used to love, I mean seriously loved, all those Art House Films. Now you couldn't even pay me money to see those things. I could care less about them now. It's funny how life changes you. Um, hmm. not, not to say they're not good or anything, it's just, I don't know, I'm going to have some escapism. I'm going to go for some guns and spaceships and aliens, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, 
just the kind of way I want to, just the way I roll. You know, don't get me wrong, I if some woman wants me to watch a chick flick with her. I guess that's what's So here are our old carburetor parts, and uh, this is our new stuff. And uh, I showed you the parts, I gave you the, uh, I gave you the part number. I did. It's in the description. Okay, so I'm going to put this part on first. These two sit on top of this like that. All right, let's look at the uh, new stuff and see if it matches. Uh, I hope it does. So I wasn't too sure about it, if this kit was the right kit. Nope, that's different from this one, okay. It's not that one. Yep, that looks like that. Okay, so we know that's right. It's not the same as this. Yeah. Sorry, you didn't see that, yeah. This and this, they both look the same. So, okay, I think we, we got a match so far. This kit looks like it is the right kit. All right, so this goes down first on top of that, like that. And then the new, this new one goes on top of that, like that, okay? And then we place both of these. Oops. Down like that. Is that gonna work? <laughs> there you go. Almost. Wait for it. Yeah, that didn't work. I gotta, I gotta get this out of the way. Ooh. There you go. Alright, so just let you know, this is, you have to push, press that back as that kind of gets in the way. And then we have um, two of these uh, beefy little friends on top. This carburetor is considerably simpler than the other uh, little carburetors I've worked on. I don't know if it's because of its age or because I mostly have rebuilt Walbros, but the Zama is particularly simple. So this idle, this is the idle screw right here. Okay, so we know that these two are, are done. We need to get okay, those two are done. So we need to get these two now. Explain to you something uh, Musty One does, and uh, you know, I, 
I have a better idea why he does it now because, you know, I've just been doing this for some time now, so thanks to him, of course. We love you, Musty. Musty one. So, okay, yep, we're good. That matches with that. And this here matches that. See how soft and supple that is? This is like really hard. And that's because it's so hard it won't uh, allow for the uh, fuel to constantly be uh, sucked in to the carburetor. Because it needs to go like this. Okay, so we can retire that, and we're going to retire that. And uh, I'm just like uh, clicking on my uh, laptop there. I have the video of myself doing this. So let's get the, uh, the new uh, hope that we don't have a hard time doing this, but let's get the new needle in. We have, oh, we have two needles here. Jeez. A short one and a long one. Okay, so we have a new spring, short needle. Got that out. Got ourselves a uh, seat there. Um, okay, it's gonna reuse the. Uh, that pin there. So slide this through like that. And remember, be careful because you can lose the spring, and when you do, it's misery. The best way to do this with it is to put this into a um, into um, a uh, a bucket. So if it's in a bucket, what will happen is that you won't. If it you lose the spring, you at least you know it bounces inside there. So. That's my advice. I could lose it right now, and uh, I hope not to. Oh, I think a good thing to look out for is um, is the um, the sharpness of the needle itself. If it's really sharp, that's good. If it, the tip looks dull, blunt, then um, it won't uh, stop airflow, which is important. Uh, fuel flow that is. Oh boy. Yeah. It's getting awkward. Okay, I have that upside down. That's the first problem. Second. So put that there. Like that. Okay. okay. Here's our new spring. So, so we gotta hmm, figure this out. That goes in there like that. That goes across like that. Yeah, I can't do this with the gloves on. Have, have some dexterity, but not enough, you know. Okay, so. spring under here. <laughs> this is gonna kill me. This thing always kills me. Yep, yeah, yeah. Spring goes there, like that. Okay. A thousand carburetors later and it's still annoying. 
that goes on like that. Got, just got to figure out the ultimate workflow. There is a workflow that's Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> uh, I almost had it, but then, you know, I missed the, uh, missed get it under there, come on, get it under there, okay. Okay, good. So we have, um, screws. One's one of these. <laughs> Which one is different? Okay, this is the odd one. That's the different one. not catching. Hmm. Okay. Does that not work? Yeah, that's the angle. That's in a weird angle, man. That's... That tripped me up a bit there. Let's get this set back up again. Okay, put this spring down. That's the first part. <laughs> Don't let it go flying off of nowhere and you can't find it like that. I got it though. Okay, put the spring down. Then you put. That's, that's me cursing right there. Mm -hmm. Keeping it a PG. Okay, so that goes down on top of that. Strip this, it's on some weird angle. Wow, okay, that was particularly. Challenging. Okay, so <coughs> Zama has a leveling tool. We're gonna play around with that right now. All right, I only want to try this again so you get a better idea of what's going on. Okay, so we've all seen Musty One do this, right? He'll blow into the uh, hose and uh, he'll check. He'll turn this carburetor upside down, right side up, right? When he does that, right, that needle right there that pushes down. When that pushes down, right, when it's downwards, like that, pushing into the carburetor, right, we get this situation where it will hold, see that right there? It holds the PSI. Right? This one creeps a little bit. 
if it's got a really good seal, it won't creep. You know, and it could be creeping because it doesn't have any fuel, because the fuel kind of helps. But what happens, right? Watch. I'll put some more air in there for you. Yeah. So if I push down on this now, right, right here, I'm going to raise that needle up out of there, and then you'll see how all the, the pressure just drops. See that? Well, that's what's happening when he. So he'll turn it upside down like this, and you'll go like that. And, you know, in a perfect world, that wouldn't really hold any pressure. But it's holding a little bit right now. But that's what he's doing, you know. So, one of the things about carburetors, if they're failing, they can't hold pressure whatsoever. And I believe um, the needle could be failing in situations like that, as in, like, the point is not sharp anymore. There could be a lot of, like, um, gummed up uh, um, uh, gasoline, you know, it just kind of like kicks on there. It looks like varnish, varnish, that's what it gets, very varnishy. Um, other than that, yeah, I think we I think we did a good job. We're happy, I'm happy, I hope you're happy. This seems to be holding at like 6 psi, yeah, 10, 10 is, um, 10 is not much for it, but it's, it's uh, 6 psi. Oh. Saying to you, it holds at like six psi. Well, it's at five now. Cool. So that's what that does. Just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a of a visual with that. Okay. So let's continue with this. So with this side here, um, this goes down first. Yeah, you can't really mess it up because the holes won't line up. Yeah, I don't think you can really mess this up. Yeah, so that the, that goes on first, and then the diaphragm. This metal part here goes into it. Then this. So hook into that. So I've seen, um, I'm, ass I'm assuming again from what we just tested, this would be the in, that's going to be the out. That's what I think. I don't remember. So we kind of have to prep this tank a little. Um, and we got to pull that out, that's the line. That, this is going to be the uh, return, because that's a fuel filter attached to that, so. We kind of go in there. Oh well. Kind of fill out. Okay. Fuel filter. So let's uh, let's let's just label this. So very easy just to forget forget things. Okay. So this is the return. That's, that's all we need because you know it's only two choices. Anyway, so that's the return. 
school filter. What is going on with us? Don't know. I see a fuel filter. But... That is a fuel filter. itself through about some fuel line here. Hmm. That filter is just kind of like poking up right here. Don't know if uh, Let's see how that works. Because this is the thing, like it sits, well, you can't see it, kind of sits like that, so the fuel enters there. Fuel line needs to be sitting at the bottom, you know? So, kind of makes sense that it's there like that, poking through this hole. My issue is I want to... There you go. Okay, so that's the kind of fuel filter we're, we're working on. All right, so I kind of uh, was just, you know, I took this needle nose, held the filter like that by the top, pushed in, hold it there, and I just pushed it back to there. Now, I put my finger in, just kind of hold the filter like this. I'm turning it like that to get it all on the barb all the way down, right? Because I thought I can just get it over just putting a fuel, fuel line in, but it doesn't seem to be a, tight enough. So I think with it all the way around the barb like this, then you can just back it through. Maybe. It'll be a little tighter. I'm not really sure. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, well. That just... It's not realistic, is it? It's called all the space, but... It... I can't get that through. Okay, you know what? That's what I'm saying. It makes me think. I don't know, let me try the. Uh, try... So I thought I'd try a smaller diameter fuel line. So I kind of like got that on the barb like that. Pushed it through. It's no way. It's just too loose. It's so, uh, plan C. Alright, so this is my issue. I think this is too loose, right? I can't put the old fuel filter back. I can, but it doesn't seem to slide through. I thought I would slide it back through, put the fuel line around it, and pull it down. Yeah, that's not happening. Right? The other fuel line's too small. I think if I leave it like that, it's just going to piss right out. So, I'm thinking, right, that my only other cho choice right now is to, like, maybe fill up this hole... So I think, and then maybe drill a new hole. Um, yeah, that's my that's my thinking right now. So, yeah, I, uh, let's just 
uh, that's my problem. I, I'm trying to figure out a solution. We're going to use this. It says here that uh, this is a 5-minute epoxy, Primatech, and it's gap filling. And uh, it says here, um, can you read that? Resistant. Resists water, gasoline, diesel, kerosene, and most other chemicals. So this should work. I'll we'll give it a try. So here's my plan. I'm gonna roughen. Should I clean it first? Yeah. So I take some uh, isopropyl. Yeah, this is a new to be and dirty sock. Not like the other failed black sauce that I use. Give it a nice good cleaning. Because we're going to patch that hole. Let's sand it. This is a uh, 100 grit. Now another way to do this would be to like use a metal um, welding plastic welder. It's, looks like a basically like a hot iron. I mean, um, what do you call it? Gun. The kind that you use to like uh, solder. Yeah, soldering gun. <laughs> the kind you use to solder a soldering gun. Yeah, that one. Okay, so that's good. All right, I'm gonna try to mesh it also. So fill it and mesh it. So you go like this. Take that. All right. The the label right, came off. You're gonna have to. Yeah, that that was on there. So we'll, we'll put that back on. Cause I need to know what the heck that is. So we're gonna go like this. Pull that off. All right. We're going to. Uh, we need to mix it. Mm. And mix it with something a little bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna mix it on top of that. So I guess squeeze both of those together. Right, and then you pull back on the syringe and you cap it so you can use it again take that and just get a nice mix probably might need more That's good. Okay. Let's see. Fill that in like that. Probably could put mixed up a little bit more, couldn't I? Yeah. Do that, and then what we'll do just kind of put that down on top of it. Not to say that's going to make a difference because it's not like we're trying to pull pieces together, you know. I'm just trying to see if that's going to help that. All right, we'll let that cure. So, I made a couple mistakes the last time I um, did this. So, the hole's all patched up, it's kind of Nice, I cut the excess off. If you want to know what this material is, this is the kind of stuff that you buy to um, replace the uh, screen on your um, you know, your house. So that's all that is. It's, some, it's kind of plastic. I think in a perfect condition, perfect world, I would have a, a plastic welder with a plastic welding rod. That would have been the way to go, but I don't have that. So 
It's like $400 or $200 for it. So I need to go into the tank, right, and grab like this and pull the um, fuel line through for the, uh, this, because this fuel line here is going to be the one that I place the uh, fuel filter on. So we're going to go like this. We're going to use this line. So this line has to be pretty, I want it to be nice and tight. So I'm going to go even tighter than that. And uh, so what we do is just look at the grab some bits. Okay, that's uh, 11 sixteenths. Let's go a little smaller. This is uh, 5 30 seconds. Yeah, I like it. I mean, so this is smaller, so I think it's going to give me a much tighter, tighter uh, fit. So let's go. All right. So we know that because we need to reach into here, right? We're gonna. I'm gonna pull this hole forwards. I mean, not forwards. I'm gonna pull the hole, this hole here, closer to there, so that way it'll be easier to get access to it. So we can drill in. So that's the original. Let's go right here. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna use. Well, let's see how well we can do this. Uh, we remember this has two gaskets on it. We have that gasket, and then we have this gasket. It's a little weird, but it goes like this. Hole goes around like that. Okay? This is the bottom of the crankcase. These holes here are where the uh, fuel lines go through, right? I kind of had to label some stuff. Here we go. So we'll try to do this. This top longer is for uh, the return, fuel return. This goes right into the tank. This bottom one comes the carburetor connects to that so okay that's what we have right over here in the carburetor we have I labeled this for us um, this goes fuel filter that's why I put the F there and on this side PB hmm. primer bulb it's because of the primer bulb, this one. All right, so let's try to put this together. First thing we want to do is um, we want to get the, see if we can actually get our fuel line through this very, very narrow passage. Hopefully it's not the worst thing in the world. And uh, you do this, just want to make this as long as long and thin as possible. Longer and thinner, it's going to be the easier it is to, to grab. Okay. So. Kind of lubricate that there. Slide that there. Okay, so now that's like that. It's much easier to just reach in like this. Try to grab it because I have it drilled out where it's less further away. There you go. So much easier that was. Okay, so we know that that's for the uh, fuel filter. Uh, by the way, what I sprayed was a silicone spray right here that helps a lot with getting the stuff in. Okay, so we have the silicone spray. And then we need to get a fuel filter on that. So let's get, in, get ourselves a new fuel filter. Make this a little neater. Take our fuel filter. Kind of work that on there. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. So I'm trying to pull that back in. All right, All right. so I, th this fuel line, I don't really like it that much because it's a little rigid. It doesn't really sit well at the bottom, but 
This one looks, seems to be good enough for now. Okay, so that's that. The next thing we want to do is uh, kind of like, we kind of have to find a, hold it together to get a feel for how long things are going to be. So this kind of holds onto that like that. Okay, we need to get, um, okay, this comes with the about filter, this comes through like this, comes through one of these. Maybe like that. How about that bottom one? I don't know. I'm we'll just giving it a try. Giving it a try. Okay, so that goes like that. This goes like this, right? And then that goes on top of there. That slides into that. So let's just give that a little bit of a cut right there. Going once, going twice. You know, well, this is it. Okay. So we know that, that goes to there. All right. The next thing we want to do now is solve the problem of uh, going from the bottom here. Okay. So we need another. We go through something, some one of these holes we have to use. Hopefully it's that one. Okay, so this will go into okay. So this, okay, so this is return. This top one, so I can, okay, let's just, let's put that right in right now. silicone spray. Okay, that hole's a little wider so you can actually push it through. I like the holes to be considerably tighter because, well, you know, more of a leakage. Okay, so that's the return line, right? So put that back. Um, okay, so that's going to go into this return line's going to go into into that return bar, that line, so we can cut like that much. Yeah. We have a good bit of uh, inside of the tank, so we don't have to be too worried about that. And so that'll go into the return like this. Right. Okay. Like this. So we need to put one more. This here is gonna go from it's gonna go from the back of this. Choices here. Do I go that one? And that one? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
So that goes. This goes to the bottom of the of this. So all we need is that much. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have a so here we go. Now don't forget your, uh, you know, that's your part number. It's a current case cover. And we're gonna go, that's this, put that back on. Sorry, like that. Feed this line through. Yeah. Yeah. This is the fill. This is also a gasket on top of there, and we have four of these that look like that. Those will go like this. These are T20s, so it's a T20. And this is a T20, T25. It's a little funny. In general, I don't put any um, like gasket sealant in between the, the plastic. I use it when it's like metal and plastic. Wait, <laughs> that's silly because then the other side's metal and plastic. Okay, so I guess not all the time I do it. Um, okay, so that is intact, right? So now we need to get. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what's what's what. Okay, turn. So, okay, so this carburetor goes onto there now. And it looks. Hmm, hold on one second. I think there's a butterfly that needs to go on, but I'm not really sure. Right here. See the hole? Okay, so we need to feed the, um, this through that hole. The, uh, the linkage, like that, there you go, right? And then, we want to attach that linkage to the carburetor throttle, which is this right here. So we're gonna go through and under, around, no, no. Hmm. Don't really know the proper orientation. <laughs> That's tricky. Let's see. How we can... Ah, come on. Under. 
under and around. Like that. Why does that look so dicey? Does that work? No, sorry. It'd be like this. The uh, yeah, that works. Trigger pulls. Okay, good. So that's that, right? Wait, you didn't see anything. I'm so sorry. Ah, there we go. Let's see, right there. And I put it up. I pull on the. Uh, and that works well. Okay. So we have uh, two of these coarse threaded ones. They have washers on them. So these are the ones that uh, hold Okay, we need to put this on first. Uh, I guess it's a, it's a you know, choke. So That goes like that. Goes through like this. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm. Well, that felt too easy. Because it didn't line up. Okay. So that makes sense. Something doesn't add up here. No, 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 no. That does not make sense. How's that a choke? You can't move it. Yeah, I kind of doubted myself. That that, that is correct. But um, it felt weird. I thought this part moved. Like, you know, it was just wrong, I guess. That goes through like that. Those two line up like that. Right. And these are, uh, like the T25s, maybe? No, too big. T20. Yep, they're two twins. Before we go too far, let's attach these. Oh. Might have already gone too far. So let's filter. So this is the fuel filter. This is the up to the carburetor at the bottom. Like that. Mm -hmm. Carburetor. Nope. Okay. Looks good. So we had to get the muffler on. We never did a vinegar bath for this, but the intention was there. So this has two nice long screws, but it has a gasket here. So that gasket is that. Seven five three zero four six one nine. Should put some uh nah. 
It'll just burn off anyway. It's good because it gets so hot right here. So it just goes like that. Like this. Okay, so that was these screws. They had a much thinner thread because they're going into metal. We have two of them. They have no washers on them. So what I like to do is slide it through, line it up like that. Slide this through like that. Roll that up. Okay. Now these are very wide. The T twenty five. Yeah. So if anybody watching Musty One's channel, you can see that, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking that Ferrari kit that he got, it's not going to do anything with it. Well, at least not down the path that it was going, because I think it's just too much. He, inherit, he inherited that project too, too kind of like, it's all over the place. You know, the, who, the previous person was really working on it, and he was, he was stuck in a lot of like, it looked like they were just trying to... That sucks. Try, trying to figure out some some things, you know what I mean? I don't think it's practical to even try to take a, take over that project at that point. That's what I that's what that's what my feelings are. I think he'll probably just if he does anything, I'll just probably put a VW engine in in there. Well, Porsche engine that is, which is a VW engine. Um, anyway. Yeah, so that is that, and uh, that, that flipped all the way over, didn't it? Okay, it's like it was like that. Right, we want to put the um, we have a, a shroud back here, like that. Right. Okay, so. That slides on top of there, and that's your choke. I don't know what it's choking. Doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. I think that's where I'm going to run into problems, because I don't really know what that is supposed to be doing, because it doesn't, there's not much to turn. Hmm. I gotta look into this one. So you see right here, <coughs> There are those two, the high and low fuel adjusters, and um, they are, <laughs> the EPA has, has been uh, trying to make sure that the consumer doesn't get to actually modify the uh, fuel mixture, air mixture. So they put these caps on these things, or they'll modify the actual fastener to accept a, a certain type of bit. Now that's the kind of bit we have to work with. Um, we're going to have to come back to this and uh, when we get that bit. Another thing is uh, we can uh, use a Dremel and just... Uh, show you what I mean. All right. Just take a Dremel and cut right across this. Sorry. Right across this, like that. Make slits in the metal here and the top of that. If that works, you know, then we can adjust it with a, like a flathead, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to do, do it with the right. So this is a really interesting um, choke. It's this thing right here. Right? Now, you know, that sits on top of it, right? And you turn it uh, clockwise. So you put it on like this. Okay? And you turn this clockwise like this. kind of locks, right? Then you pull the trigger, the throttle. And then it unlocks that, so you know, it goes goes like this. Hit the throttle, look at that. So, <laughs> it was confusing to me, right? Because this is like one of those things where I was like, oh, what the heck does that do? So, anyway, it's called Easy Fire. 
It's supposed to help you, like, uh, start this motor considerably easier. We'll see what happens, right? Because I was looking for, like, a choke that moved, but um, I'm assuming that's, that's, that's what it is. All right, so let's put that on. Hope, hope that the easy fire delivers. Okay, so we have a one, two, three screws. There you go. Okay. All right, these are gonna go into plastic, so they're a little on the, a little on the thicker, thicker uh, gauge. And they are, what do you think, T25s? Nope. T20. Yep. Alright, so this trimmer, they made a nice little hole for you to adjust it. See right there? So that's where you would slide the, uh, uh, the little, the, the, whatever. I, it's called eccentric. That's one of the names. It's called an eccentric bit. Whatever. If you can, if you can get it, it's like a hole. It's a circular one with a piece of metal sticking down, offset somewhere. And there's two sizes. A small one is a big one. But that's what you're going to use in there. When we get it, we'll come back and we'll like, we'll try to... Remember how tricky this was to get all lined up? So, you know, you have the, the top here, right? That screw had a hole in it, right? And I was just not getting it anywhere. Well, that looks like that's about right. That's as close as we're gonna get, so... Yeah, I think I got it all figured out. I almost forgot. I know some of you are like, no, don't forget uh, the, the air filter. So we got to put that here, like that. And with this air filter, right, you want to, um, if it's dirty, you wash it with soapy, soap and water. You want to put some oil, 5W30 on it, just to help um, it catch all the uh, particulates before they enter into the carburetor. And the fuel system. All right, so just so I got the tool right. It's got multiple names. A circle seems to be one of its aliases, and there's two sizes of this. You're gonna have a, like a bigger diameter and a smaller diameter. This is the bigger diameter. Now you might not be able to see it, but um, oh, all right, great. So somewhere here there is. Okay, the pin itself that should shoot straight down and go into the hole is bent. So I have to bend it back because when I try to go into... When I try to stab the carburetor like this to turn it, right? It doesn't do anything. Can't catch. So I gotta push that pin over. It came like that. So, I don't know. Let's... So this might be a little blurry. Yeah, that's the best I can do. So, this is what I think happened, right? I think somebody bought this and returned it on Amazon. And they used it. They didn't really care. And they bent it. And uh, the manufacturer, or sorry, the seller just said, you know what? Let's just sell it again. And uh, so they did. And here we are. Trying to fix it. It's probably a little hard to see, but uh, do my best. 
Yeah, it's a whole lot less. See, that pin was pushed up against the side right there. So what I ended up, how I ended up solving this was I uh, took the little screwdriver, kind of jammed it in there and just pushed it out downwards and I was able to get in between that. So, uh, gained one tool, lost another. So I broke a tip off my, uh, my pick. So anyway, so here we go. So this fits, let's go. We're gonna go, can, can you see? Mm. No. Okay, so those two, right, are, um, are for adjusting the uh, carburetor. Uh, one's high, one's low. I don't really know right now, but it's 50 50 chance. But either way, right, we start off like this. We're gonna tighten this all the way down. Oops, I don't want to go anymore. And we're gonna come up one and a half like that. Tighten this all the way down. Okay, come up one and a half. One, two, three. Like that. Oh no, this thing's getting bent. That's scary. We might have to return this. Hmm. Okay. So it does turn it. Okay, see, it's coming all the way out. Okay, let's go all the way in until we can't anymore. And that can go down more than that. I know that because. So I just think this tool is screwed up. I'm trying to avoid cutting holes in this, grooves in this thing. Oh, I see. It's because it's not really straight. Okay, so it's having a hard time because it's not really straight. Hmm. I just don't want to break it. Yep, I broke it. Did I break it? No, not, not yet. Almost. Yeah, it's gonna break. <laughs> oh my goodness, really? Okay, so this tool is pretty messed up. I try to turn it, fix it. It's not lining up at all. This is giving me a hard time. So what I'm what I what I'm going to do is take the just unscrew it as much as I can, right? All as in like I'm sorry, take it all the way out. That's what I'm gonna do. And then once I take it all the way out, I will just uh, cut a cut a notch in it, you know. That's that's the best way to go, cause uh, at this at this moment, like nothing's working. Like, like nothing at all. Yeah, all right, so here we go. Um, so I'm doing one at a time so I don't get confused. All right, so I got it just, you know, a little wonky, but it, it will turn it out. It's, uh, but I can't, it's just, it's just, it's like it wobbles. So we're gonna cut a, uh, a groove in this. With the Dremel, don't wanna, don't clamp too hard because you have threads there. This is this is a Chinesium. Okay, so got that there. Put a little cutting oil. Now I'm just gonna do one slit, so that way I can use this to adjust the uh, the high and low. Yeah, that's enough to get in between. Yeah, that that should be just enough to. It's gonna turn it down. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Let's put that one back. 
See how that turns. Oops. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Turns. It's a little weird. It's off center, but it's hard to. I just really like couldn't see that wow my glasses on. But it does turn. I can actually adjust it now. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way down. And then we'll come back one and a half. And let's pull the other one out <laughs> and do a better job this time. Let's see if I can do a better job. Okay, got it. They just snatched it. Mm -hmm. Get in there. Yeah, that's perfect. And it's centered. I hate myself. <coughs> All right, anyway, so let's see. Clean the tip off there. Put that in. All right, so, you know, you make the best out of the worst, I suppose. That's the best way to think about it, you know? Make the best out of the worst. It's a little, a little rough going in there. Why is that? That's bottomed out, right? So we can go one and a half. That's half. One and a half. All right, let's see what happens. So I put some fuel in there. Just hit the primer ball. See if it gets anything going. Nothing. Alright. Yeah, primer bulb's not getting any fuel in there, so try something else. Alright, so I noticed that the uh, the fuel was not getting in, so I just kind of like tilted it a little bit more. But you can see here that uh, the fuel's actually coming into the primer. So, looks like it is, I had to pump it for a while before it started flowing. So there you go. Got a lot of fuel flying. So let's give it a shot. This time it'll work. Let's get to turn the spool the way that way. Don't don't hit the throttle.
one. I'm going to adjust the one that way. I'm going to tighten it down a little bit. Say right. so soon, dude. I'll. Oops, I'm sorry. I'll be doing this for a little bit. I'll play around with it and uh, get it started and I'll bring you back. So it took a little while, but I finally got it to go. Let's listen. Let's take a listen. No throttle. Don't, don't touch the throttle until it catches. Good. 